Well, hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and yes, I'm in my rainbow garden. I'm going to do an update on the rainbow garden, what is going on, because I am totally amazed. We are getting so much out of here, and when you think about it, it's barely been set up with plants for two months. I mean, the whole garden's only about three months old, and yet I've got so much going on and I went at my own pace. They were $4 each. These are tester paints. But look at this. You can get like two, possibly three chairs out of one can. I went really slow and I did one tote at a time, which I absolutely love because had I gone through and let's say bought potting soil for all these totes here, and there's not that many totes, you can count them and see, it would have cost me a few hundred dollars. But building my own soil, putting in everything from around the yard. Remember, you can put anything on the bottom because the bottom the plants are barely going to get to. And keep in mind, I also, you'll see as I walk through, I don't fill the totes to the top. I may add to it later as the plants are done and I'm adding more plants, but I do not fill the totes to the top. I give them shelter from the weather by leaving quite a few inches and the plants being planted down inside. Let's walk through and let me explain to you what's going on because I am just flabbergasted on what's going on. And I'm, I'm just amazed. It's like, this is my favorite garden for multiple reasons. It looks pretty, it looks nice, it's fun to sit in, it's fun to watch all the birds come in. This place was nothing three and a half months ago. There was nothing here. And now you've got like an entire ecosystem with the birds coming in and the insects coming in and butterflies and everything. Let's walk through. This, don't do that, is a mistake. I threw a bunch of seeds in there. This is squash. I have no idea what it is. And there's too many in there. So I'm either gonna thin them out or pull them all out, compost it and get something serious in there. This is my strawberry tower. You saw me build it. I absolutely love it. Why do I have tool on it? Because I'm not taking any chances. I'm gonna take it off while I'm talking to you here. It's so easy to take off with clothespins. Look at this, and it turns. We've been getting bowls and bowls of strawberries, and I just planted these strawberries. I got the bare root ones, and they just keep going. There's not much on there. You can see there's one down there, because I pulled a whole bowl off the other day. Here's more here, but when you turn it, you'll see that there's a lot of strawberries, and it's just so great to service. Oh, see, there is more. And you know what? I can take it off, because I'm here, because I have to leave it a little bit open so the bees can get in. This has been fantastic. I love this. I love the idea I can just stand in one place and be lazy. <laughs> and turn it and just pick as I need and then at night is really when I cover it in case you know rodents or something try to get in and they won't come to the tool. Anything I've covered with tool they're not bothering with. Okay let's go to the first tote here. Look at this! Look at this! See the first one I should take it off and compost it. It didn't do anything because they were all female plants. Oh, I should say all female flowers, so it's rotting out. But yet, if I wanted to, I could have picked it earlier and used half of it. Remember, you can eat the flowers on zucchini, so of course you can eat the zucchini that didn't get pollinated, and they're small, so there's no issue with that. And we'll set that aside because I can cut that out and give it to the dogs, even if I steam it or whatever. But look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now the second one hasn't done too much. There's a small one back there. I've got some walking onions in there. It should be one zucchini plant because it gets so big and you'll get so much more that way. And then maybe a few other smaller plants. You can even put a tomato in there, which I have in the back. But it probably won't do much until the zucchini's done many, many months from now. Then I've got this broccolini, I guess you could call. This broccoli plant grew different than the other one. It's growing spears. I absolutely love this plant. It's my favorite. I'm not sure which one it is, and I'm hoping I can figure it out because it, it's, not, it's only labeled broccoli. Those two are a little different. It's got a deeper, darker green leaf, and it constantly grows spears, like my old sprouting broccoli. I may take cuttings off of that. And then in here, I've got a little tomato plant. I've got this tomato plant. And I've got some cuttings in here. I've got some rose bush cuttings. Look at that. Roses, this is a dinosaur kale. Those are just so I can stick them in there and if they take, I can move them and some of them are taking. 
here is another zucchini. Oh my gosh, look at this. I gotta get you in here. Look at this. This is massive. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'm leaving it too long. This has got to come out. See that? Look how big that is. Here's another one here. There's another one there. So that's going to have to come out for dinner like fast. And I've got some beets growing in the bottom. That's why it's doing so well, this one, because there's only one. Yet I've got a broccoli back here, see, in a pot. So it's layered and it works fantastic that way. I should have actually on that one just left one plant. I should yank it out and move it. You know, I might do that. I did that the other day. Then here's tomatoes. Look at this, I've got tomatoes already coming. I didn't even see that. And then down here, these are Korean melons, all these little ones. That's elephant garlic. Now here's the thing. We're not warm enough. We have been so cold. Uh-oh. I keep forgetting to get that black sugar cane out. We, it's going to get too big for this. We've been so cold that the melon hasn't really taken off yet. So I've got to do something with that. In the back here is a bucket. And it's got a purple, a purple type of kale just for a cutting. And then I've got lettuce growing. It's going to go to seed. I'll get some of the seeds and plant them. I know the birds will get some of them too. And that's the other broccoli. These two broccolis don't throw the spears like that one does. So that one is fantastic. Now here is another zucchini plant. And let's see what's going on in here. Oh, they're busy in here. We don't want to bother them too much. This is just starting. This is a little bit of a newer plant, but we've already got zucchini in here. And obviously that's because they're all doing their thing. Isn't that wonderful? And then back here is the cobra. That's a black, um, it's a black pepper, but it turns red when it's ripe. You can eat it anyway. Some people eat them black. I wait till they turn red and they're really hot. The, the drier they get, the hotter they get. And then here the mustard. I can't believe it. there's so much on there and I picked so much of it yesterday. I actually sliced that, I didn't slice it. I picked a bunch of big leaves. I sliced up an onion from in here and fried it and Gary added it to a sandwich I made and he loved it mixed with the mustard. This purple mustard is so hot. You can barely eat it. But fried with onions, it lost the heat and it tasted really good. This has got a ton of big onions in here. I couldn't believe how big the onions are. Look how big they are. Onions, mustard, like a bok choy, a Chinese cabbage. And then one of my bok choy or Chinese cabbage already went to seed. I might collect that seed. That might be fun. And then of course I've got some onions that went to seed too. And I'm going to collect the seeds and I'm going to grow them also. Now this one is a newer plant I planted in here and it's already starting. Another zucchini. Uh, this is just a rose cutting. Just sitting in here for now. I'm using it for layering so I can, oh see? See, 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 there's worms down there. See the worms? I use this for layering because the plants really like layering. Mother Nature layers. As plants are growing, things are falling. They're falling from the sky, you know. Branches are falling, thing leaves are falling, and it layers the ground. They love layering. This is nothing, we'll get into this later. I made these just playing around with them, and I've been sticking them around and looking at them, and I've noticed a lot of the birds won't go near these. They won't, so they won't go inside. They think it's something, I don't know. And then here I've got garlic in here. We have actually been picking garlic already. And then another lettuce. There's more lettuce here. There's, well, look at all the lettuce that went to seed. You've got the birds coming in here. You got the bush tits eating the insects. You got the goldfinches coming in eating my seeds. I'll get plenty of seeds off there. I'm gonna grab a bunch of seeds and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a second. And like I said, more purple mustard. There is an asparagus plant in here. We'll see what happens later on in the year. See, this is asparagus. I took it off my deck. Gary took them all. I had a bunch of seeds over a year ago that I planted on the deck and they grew and he took them all but he missed one. So I ended up with it and I thought for fun I might just stick it in there. Look, I don't have to think about it. Everything else is growing. Something got a hold of that broccoli back there but it's making a comeback. So it could just do its thing until I'm ready to do something with it. We'll just watch it. So I'll have a bunch of lettuce seeds soon and that's, we're almost there, we're almost there. Let's walk around the umbrella. Okay, then this one Really, there's another broccoli. Oh, it's dark. That's good. I can tell by the leaf this is going to be the one I like. I had two squash in here growing, which you can't even see now because of the tomato seeds that are coming up everywhere, which now has turned into a tomato nursery, and I'm trying to pull them out and stick them in different places. And being that there's so much stuff going on, I pulled one of the squash and I moved it into a tote on the other side of the yard. 
and that worked out really really well for me because it's taking off now but this oh gosh we've already got fruit starting but this gave me ideas so what I'm doing here is setting up this tote see what I did here I'm going to start seeds in there so this is going to be my little outdoor nursery I'm going to put a screen cover that I made and we'll get into that too over it and then it's made with a tote lid and then as the seeds grow let me go around the umbrella again I will be popping them out and planting them wherever I want. I don't have to cater to it in the house. A few things I'll cater to. We're growing a hummingbird tree. It's just a type of tree bush that grows these flowers that look like hummingbirds. We're growing that in the house and a few other things I've been bringing out. But why not do it this way if this grows better? With the compost being new in there and breaking down, it's giving a gentle warmth. It's keeping the soil at almost 70 degrees in there so it's giving me a jump start on all these plants. That's why all these are growing. They're getting a jump start over all the other things that are struggling because we've been so cold. We had a warmer April, I believe, than we had May. But these don't know it because their feet are warm. So as long as their feet are warm, like wearing warm socks, they're happy and they just keep growing and growing. Now, there's nothing wrong with the totes I had, up, had set up last year and I'm going to refurbish it. I've been adding in more leaves and kitchen scraps and things from the garden. But the point is it won't create the same 70 degree heat. Maybe a little, but not as much as these because this was all, well, let's call it raw soil. It was soil that was in the making. The plants will grow with it that way because it's not hot. It's warm. The plants love it. And this is why this all grew really good. Over here... I'm going to set up another nursery. Use another lighter colored tote so the sun, like the, see there's a teal one there and a green one there. The sun can just a little bit get through and then I can have seeds growing there and then I can plant them wherever I want. So that's what's been going on in the rainbow garden. I'm just amazed. Now, as far as making it and taking other soil, like for the top, I either use the cheapest soil I can buy because that's all I can really afford or I will grab out of the other totes for the top. Either way is good. So whatever way you want to do it. And of course you can go buy bags of organic soil, the best soil, anything you want to do. And that's basically it. This is my pizza garden. And see this real quick. The rabbit got my lettuce. The rabbit did not get this lettuce because I draped some tool over it. Isn't that cool? So he can continue to eat that one as long as he leaves that one alone. And he can't reach this one. So that's really cool. This has been amazing. I'm going to be building a ton of these. It's not what you think. This is such a great system. I'm so excited. I've got the video on that. I'll show you exactly how I did it. And then here I've got garlic this is all garlic in there the blueberries are in there I think I'm going to end up moving the blueberries another hummingbird station and then a little water feature on that broken chair you saw me weave it in and this is some sage in there and I'm going to have Gary probably take that I haven't set up this wall yet but I'm almost there I know already what I'm going to do I'm going to set up another vertical garden in here with buckets and then I'm going to have this one tote here on this chair and then this is a special one except that black tote is going to be going up against the wall there because I can't get any more of these black totes. They had them on sale for $10. You can stack on this. It's really like a heavy, heavy duty tote. It's probably going to last 20 years. But I have other ideas for that. So I'm going to take, I have two black totes, this one and another one. I'm going to take it there. I'm going to do another stacking job like I did over there because that stacking job over there has been amazing. I'm going to have squash growing on the bottom. And then I've got watermelon and cucumbers growing on the top. We're not walking there because it's not part of my rainbow garden. Look at the hummingbirds. You know they love it here because some of the totes, being all brand new, create a little bit of fruit flies around. And we have brought in like hundreds of hummingbirds right here because they hang around looking to see if they can find their fruit fly. So funny. And then here's the other strawberry tower. And I personally think I like this setup better. I think the plants can breathe a little bit. And they like having a little bit more air around them than a closed-in bucket. 
That's not to say they're not growing. Of course, they're growing and we've been picking strawberries. I just, it's a personal thing. Okay, and then garlic, and then my potato mint. I think I figured out two things wrong with the potato mint. See the rabbit? The rabbit got my lettuce. Now, I have a rabbit that lives in here too now. He thinks, oh, this is the greatest place to live. The hawks won't bother me. I can sit under the chairs. I can hang out here. I can eat when I want. The potato mint, I think is too overcrowded. I put too many, I put six little plants. I think I ended up with seven. So I'm gonna move some of them there and I'm probably gonna to have to get more out because it grows so rapidly. And I've talked about that. It grows a little potato that you can eat raw or cooked and you treat it like a potato and it tastes like a potato. So that's it. I wanted to do an overview. See, I'm growing strawberries. Um, I want to just end my little moringa. I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on. I'm just amazed. Though there will be times I'll have to think about it when the season comes back and I'm starting the plant. I may actually not quite empty the totes because you've already got your earthworms or microbes and everything in there, but I might take a lot more matter out on some of the totes when I want to get a jump start early and I'll probably put a whole lot more leaves in because I can't get over how much we are been harvesting out of here all because of these totes being it's basically raw you know it's brand new compost in place system that they didn't break down and while they're breaking down they create that slight warmth and they're only inches deep you know I mean look how deep it is and so you put a little bit of soil on the top and the plants just go wild literally wild and I just love this it's not cleaned up yet give me time I'm getting there and hopefully this is gonna be a whole lot of fun to maybe go live in here. I'm gonna do a lot of my DIYs in here. I'm still working in here. Like I said, I've got this whole wall to finish. And then I've got another setup I might do next to it. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still thinking on how I wanna do it. I, of course, catch all the water and rewater because remember, all that matters in there and when you water it, that's compost tea, and so I've been watering, of course, the plants back with it. Another reason why they're doing so good, but I also carry it over, and I water the cucumbers down there. So that's what I wanted to share with you today on how everything's going, and kind of give you an idea that if you want to jumpstart, you're still a little cool, you can't maybe grow until the middle of June or even July some areas, you start filling up these totes, if you're growing in totes, you get plant matter in there, and then you top it, with a few inches of potting soil and you'll be able to probably grow now as long as you're not under snow you'd be able to trick the seeds and trick the plants because it will be warm and by the time it starts to break down because it breaks down fairly quick it won't be warm forever it's only gonna be warm for a couple months two three months by then your summer will kick in they won't even know the difference and they'll be just going like gangbusters and growing because it's only a gentle warmth it's kind of like putting your plants on a heat pad except you are creating it on your own so I think I've covered everything the only other thing I love is the reason I love the totes so much is three totes they cost about five bucks a piece if you go into the store you can find them sometimes six you know that's fifteen dollars worth of a raised bed that costs over a hundred dollars because I looked at a raised bed somebody had that cost a hundred and twenty five dollars and it was no bigger than three totes the only difference was it had legs throw it on a chair and you know what you don't have to put your totes on a chair you know that I'm stacking them now those are stacked and you can of course like I've been doing for years just have them growing on the ground I have to raise them because of the rabbit but I am fortunate enough that the rabbit has not touched zucchini and that's why I can leave all the squash zucchini and certain plants tomatoes on the ground they want my lettuce and my greens and certain things so you got to work around the the rodents around here or move them sometimes Gary traps a rabbit in his yard and because he fenced it he can move him somewhere else he he moves him out I don't know how they find their way in but if he's trapping him and moving him out <laughs> there's a hole somewhere probably or He's got a smart rabbit that figured out how to maybe climb. I don't know. But with that, I hope I gave you some tips for today. Hope you're gardening. And if not, you'll be gardening soon. And I am getting back to work because I am so eager, so eager to get this whole thing done. So I can just sit back, have a cup of coffee and think, I'm done? Oh, you're never done. When you're gardening, there's always something new you think of. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow.